Hey everyone, I've decided to continue on from the last video I posted about the chassis rail being welded and finished. Uh, as you can see there, I've got a pair of them, I've got uh, three cross members as well. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble this clip as one. And the first step is to obviously put it on a table. I'm not going to put it on this table because it's my main work table. Uh, I'm not going to put it on that table because that's also a main work table. But I am going to put it on that little table over there. It's on wheels, it moves pretty easy. Uh, it's square, it's level. So we're going to start with that. First step is to <clears throat> clean the top of it because it's been sitting outside and it's crappy and rusty and there's no way in hell I'm going to put that nice lovely metal on that. Uh, I'm going to put some stringers on it um, to go lengthways, uh, widthways, sorry, um, and then I'm going to put some width locators on it, uh, which I'll go into a bit more detail of that when we get to that. But first step, clean the top of that, locate some stringers, get them all ready to be set, and then we'll go from there. All right, so these are the stringers. We've got one there and two and three. Marked center line. Uh, that measurement you're looking at here at 850 is the width of the rails, uh, width of the table, sorry, outside to outside. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now, well, I have done, uh, 850 divided by 2, 425, brings us to that measurement there, come back to centre, goes back to that measurement there, and then I just cut these little bits of RHS, and they'll sit like so, and then one on either side, got another one here for demonstration purpose hairs, um, as you can see like that, they weld on like that, and then this flips over because it's on the bottom, and then locates on the table nice and square. So that's how I do the stringers on the bottom side. So they'll get, all three of them get like that. And then I'll space them out accordingly. I then go ahead and do the top side as well. So I know the outside of the outside of the rails, it's gonna be 970. Exactly the same thing, like center line, do that by half. Land there, there, land that, like that. And then I can put some more RHS going upright, um, square and all the type of stuff and double check measurements and tack them into place. And then I've got something to clamp the outside of the rails to. So the outside of the rails are gonna clamp to like that and like that. And therefore it will keep it square running up like level. Perpendicular to the ground, that's the word I was looking for. So, um, so that's how I do the stringers. Um, I have done it like that for quite a while now and it works very well. It uh, takes a lot of the guesswork out. Uh, another thing too, um, when setting these things up, you've got to, this is the first step, so it has to be right. So square and level on that the whole time. Because if you're off center at the front a little bit, then when you're putting your diff in, because I'm going to put the diff square to the table and everything as well. So if that's off, it's going to crab, and then you're going to have to counter with the fall length, and the fall length's not going to work right because it's going to be on different arcs. So your diff's going to sort of pivot sort of like that. So you don't want that. So it's very important to get this very first stage very, very right. Uh, that's why I use a scribe um, when marking these measurements. Um, my opinion, Sharpies are for rough cut lines and writing of measurements. Um, scribe is for measurements. So if you don't have one, go get one, please, for the life of me. <laughs> please get one. They're not dear and they're great to use. Uh, one thing I do take into consideration when I am using the Scribe, because it is a very accurate measuring tool for myself, I will go back half mil on whatever my measurements were. So for example, uh, if this is 425, which it is on the bottom side, I'm just gonna flip this just for demonstration purposes. Okay, so this measurement from here to here is 425. So what I've done is measured from the center to 424.5 and then ran a scribe line. 
and now I've got from that scribe line to that scribe line is exactly 425. So half a mil for scribes. This is a measuring tool. Use it like a measuring tool. Be exact, be exact. That's all I'm gonna say on that matter. Um, so next time you're gonna see this now is all the stringers are all gonna be tacked onto the table, um, ready for the rails to go on. All right, string is tacked on. <coughs> you see the back one is looks pretty agricultural, but still totally fine. I could have spent a bit of time in SolidWorks to design something to clamp on the table, etc. But this is all it needs. Um, there's a 190 mil height difference between the back of the rail and the front of the rail. So that's where I've got 100 and the 90. So that equals up there. Uh, these are my width locators, as I've seen on the bench before. Uh, tacked on, they slide over the rail on either side. So that self centers that stringer to that table. That's why it's very important to make sure these tables are square and uh, level uh, because that's your main measuring points as I take it. Uh, another width, loader, width locator up top here, as you can see, uh, welded on the bench off the center. So when you sort of clamp these rails up like that, then that sets the width. Uh, I've got the middle cross member in first. That's what I'm gonna start with. Um, obviously I'll squared the rails up and I'll just touch on that real quickly in a second. Um, so that is then measured off the back stringer. So you're setting the stringers up to the table, which is square and level. So you've always got a measuring point off that. So I do the back one first, and then I measure from the back one to the front one, either side, make sure it's that. Still got the width locators, so the center and the center measurements still match up. Um, and then the width locator as well, clamps the rails together at the front at exactly the same distance as well as the back. Uh, I leave these little holes in here. These are for a chassis four link locator. Uh, they go on the inside of the rails. I will cut them on the outside of the rails as well um, because then I can measure from that to the stringer on both sides and then that's an uninterrupted measuring point. Uh, what I mean by uninterrupted is uh, if you weld an edge, um, you kind of weld the edge, you sort of got to grind up to it and it can be affected sometimes. Um, so therefore having little holes like these um, sort of take the guesswork out of that. So that's, that. that's how the rails are squared up. So they're 100 percent square to the table, and then obviously this cross member is 100 percent square to the table as well because it's measured off that point as well. So that's what I've got going on now. I'm going to go tack that middle cross member in now. Um, so it's locked in because that's level and it's square, and I really like it there. <laughs> that rhymed. That was awesome. Then I'm going to move on to the front cross member. Put that on there because obviously they're tab and slotted. So they only go on one way. Um, and then also I've created another measuring point off this middle cross member. Uh, another advantage too, just quickly, is um, doing like a nice sharp edge is it's a lot easier to measure to a sharp edge than a big radius edge. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it in the welding chassis rail video of why I like to do the sharp radius is because it creates more material rather than take it away. Um, so another advantage is obviously to create easier measurement points. I'm going to stop rambling, I'm going to tack this in. Uh, next time you're going to see it, uh, the front cross member, middle cross member and rear cross member is all going to be tack welded together and it's not going to have any clamps on it. Uh, and I'll give you guys a bit of a run through. All right, all the clamps are gone. Uh, welded the, the clip to the table there, just a nice easy point so I'll cut them off later. Uh, front and back, the front cross members tacked, the middle cross members tacked, the end cross members tacked. It is all square and level and it's great. Um, next thing I'm going to go do is weld where I can get access to. Um, so I've got a good strong run to there and down there. And same thing on the other side, I can obviously fully weld this cross member in its position. And then same thing, weld that through there uh, on the rear cross member and that will keep it well and truly locked down um, so after that's done I'm gonna go ahead and build the components uh, lower control arm mounts um, lower falling brackets sorry go down there uppers go there uh, they all tab and slots pretty easy got a tube uh, that slides through that cross member and links up to the lower falling brackets uh, just because 
that's where I want the energy to go off the fall link bracket. Um, so accelerate, diff rolls back, pushes fall link bar, ex pushes the car. Um, so that's where I want to keep the energy locked down to. Uh, obviously the coilover mounts are then underneath this cross member. And then there is a panard that goes there and there's going to be a sway bar <coughs> that goes in this as well. So the next step for this is obviously to put the diff in, build all the rest of the components and weld all them in. I don't think there's really any need for me to go into detail of putting a diff on the table because it's exactly the same method as this. Once you know the measurements, you can build your jig to your half travel point, lock it all in, um, and then build everything around that. So that's going to be the next step is on this clip to put the diff in. So if I change my mind, you'll see another, you'll see a video, but if I don't do another video on this, it will be basically a end of clip video, um, just for content sake. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, like, comment, subscribe. If you've got a video idea, send it through, comments, uh, whatever. Um, from looking at the data on the last video I posted, I it looked to be doing pretty good so thank you to everyone that did watch it and interact and thumbs up and shared and all that youtube crap so i'll see you on the next one thanks again